Okay, itamak skanatoni. Good morning. It is early on Thursday, May 8th, 2018, in the lunar cycle Matsi Kapisaki, some of the frog moon. And I was just out of bed having my first sip of coffee, and already I'm uh, called to deal with my initial wildlife issue of the day, <laughs> which in this case happens to be a skunk um, caught at the home of one of our local radio disc jockeys who's gonna put me on his show later this week um, but yeah I'm gonna go take that skunk and resituate him <laughs> or her whatever the case may be and we got a skunky hey there skunky here you go someplace new Probably not happy about it, but that's the way it's got to be. go to poke a skunk. Oh, there he goes. Right on. Yay. <laughs> All right. It's now about 11.30, lunchtime-ish, and I am headed to Popson Park. Um, there's a call that I'm uh, quite concerned about. Apparently, there's a snake on the road. Now, this is the same road where Mandy was hit end of last season. This is the same road where just a few days ago, we got our first call of the year and it was a roadkill mortality of a rattlesnake. Um, today could make it number two for the season already on this one road. And so I don't know what, what we're gonna run into. The, uh, the gentleman who called was not sure if the snake had been injured or not, but he did say that uh, he got bumped by a grater, like the grater that levels the road. <laughs> so it's hard to imagine that the uh, animal's not badly injured, but uh, I'm going to see what's what's going on in just a moment. That's a good one. <laughs> That's more than half its body length. Yeah, that guy got a good good shot at me. Oh my goodness. Probably the pain and adrenaline, you know. Yeah. You can see there's a scrub mark here. Yeah. The grader just went by an yeah. hour ago or a half hour ago. Yeah, he probably got and bumped then, by the grader, eh? Yeah. Shoot. Okay, so I've got to run some other errands and I don't really want to work this snake alone. I'd like to hold it while uh, maybe Mahoney cleans off the, the wound. So I'm going to just put it in the black box here 
um, for a little bit while I run and do my stuff. Now this snake is pretty bitey. I almost got a fang in the face back there. <laughs> um, yeah, it throws itself pretty good, so I'm going to be extra cautious with this snake, and I'm not going to try to work it just by myself. Take a look at that wound. Oh man, no. You know what? I'm gonna end up putting this snake out of its misery. I don't know if you can see that there, but that, that wound is bad. There's guts hanging out, blood smearing. Um, this snake is not gonna survive. You know, even though he's got some energy right now, that, that wound, I can't do anything about that wound. So, unfortunately, uh, this snake is not going to make it. I hate to say. We need to have better signage along the Popson Park Road to alert people of the rattlesnake presence. And we need to plan better when there's city operations going on in there, like the grader that went through this morning and bumped this snake. There should have been a pilot running in front of that grader to check for wildlife, especially since the timing of the operation was coinciding exactly with the rattlesnake migration that we know about. More communication between the different players in our parks. In any case, I checked the photo database regarding this snake to see if it was one that I'd encountered before I hadn't. Probably because it's one that just inhabits the coulee, the park. It stays in there, doesn't go up onto the top where the residencies are. So this is a quote-unquote good snake, so to speak. Um, unfortunately, met its end today. All right, it is now one o'clock. I've just had my lunch macadamia nuts new feature in the dollar store nut section of the candy aisle <laughs> and yeah that was unfortunate back there that's number two on that road for this season and hopefully that's it um on my way i'm on the north side of town now and uh there's a warehouse over here where they've got a pigeon issue and Fish and Wildlife referred him to me. Figuring I can help him out. I do have a bird trap. I've never used it before. So I brought it. I've never trapped pigeons or any, any of these birds before with this bird trap. So it's going to be all new experience for me. I figured, ah, oh, what should I use for bait? Unfortunately, this morning I had a bunch of like leftover rice from last night's dinner. And I just chucked it into the compost. If I knew I was having this coming up, I would have kept it. But I did have leftover movie theater popcorn hey what pigeon can resist popcorn none that i know of so, <laughs> so let's go check them out Take a quick film all right so i've got it set up here with um the bird trap baited with movie theater popcorn a little bit outside a little bit inside let's try to get them and this big warehouse there's birds you can see one up on that couple up on that light fixture hey eh? living up in the rafters up here nesting let's go see if we can get them out all right it's now four o'clock in the afternoon and I'm on my way to the University of Lethbridge there is a snake near their breezeway um, it is off of the property somewhat from what the uh, security guard is telling me. But there's some workers at the scene working like 10 feet away from the snake. They're uncomfortable with it. They want me to move it. So I'm gonna go check it out. Down here. Hey guys. Yeah, they got it. Thanks. Oh, he's in the brush there? Yeah. 
He might be all right, eh? Yeah, that's what I was I'm the guy that knows snakes, so. In here, eh? I found him. <laughs> hey, buddy. Yeah. a little further into the coolie away from away from this business. <laughs> Oh, I see it there. All right. All right. We've got this. Good. Take your picture, and I'll let you go here in the skunk brush. So this was another big mature male who I'd never encountered before. It's surprising how many snakes out there I'm running into this year that I've never seen before. But this one, you can look on the patterns on its back, and there's a pattern break just down from where my hook is situated about one third of the way down his back real distinct pattern so yeah never seen this guy before but uh, another member of the Uleth clan Not fair. 
you weren't violating <laughs> any of the rules. You're out here in the coolies, but just have to take you a little further out. Those people are scared of you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll come out and uh, and uh, check out the scene. So, okay. what is your address? Okay, so as you heard there, I have another snake call to attend to right away. That one's in my neighborhood, Heritage Heights, and I'm betting it's a bull snake. It's a, it's a possibility it's a rattlesnake, but there's a high probability it's a bull snake because that's near a bull snake den. So, um, actually, I got a second call right when I stepped into the Jeep to pull away from the university, and this is a, a definite rattlesnake um, down in Paradise Canyon on somebody's front step. So I'm gonna go grab the rattlesnake since I'm on the south end of the west side already and because I know it for sure it's a rattlesnake and somebody's got their eye on it. I'm gonna go grab that snake and then we'll go on the hunt for the bull snake. This is actually, this is Luke, this is his place here. Hi, how are you? Glad Good to meet you, Ryan. Good to meet you, yeah. Oh. Waiting by your front door. <laughs> <laughs> He's moved towards the front door apparently, so. Yeah. yeah. I've got a bucket too, but I figured uh, I, the next one I'm getting at Heritage, I believe, is going to be a bull snake. Oh, yeah. And so uh, the bucket's easier to deal with the bull snake. Okay, so I've retained the rattlesnake. It's in the back. He's not too happy, even though he's in the black box with the burlap and all of that. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to release him just as soon as I deal with the bull snake issue, if it's a bull snake. There's no telling, it could be a rattlesnake as well, but just by her description of it, the hissing and the location where she lives uh, in Heritage, I believe we're going to be dealing with a bull snake, if we're able to find the snake. A lot of times with the bull snakes, you know, they're out of there before I get there. They're on the move. <laughs> so yeah, we'll find out momentarily. I just moved all that stuff there. Okay. And I didn't see anything in it when I moved all that. I'm just visiting my sister and trying to help her clean up the backyard. All right. So it was around here. There's a bunch more of this old barrel. Yeah, I'll just scan it around. So the bull snake never materialized. If that's what it was, I searched that yard pretty thoroughly. There was a couple of places where I couldn't reach, you know, deeply under the uh, shed that she had there and a little bit under the, under the porch. Um, so it could still be, the snake could still be in that yard. But otherwise, I checked it out thoroughly and I do think it's a bull snake from the description. In any case, I'm gonna let, let this rattlesnake go now out here along the coolie rim where I'm sure this snake is somewhat familiar. Alright, 
thank you for not biting me. Thank you for being cool. <laughs> Enjoy your life out here in the coolies. Maybe I'll see you again sometime. It's another big mature snake. I believe she's a female. And I looked at her back patterns there. You can see down as you get closer to her tail, there's some pretty distinct markings. Check those against the photo database. And this is yet another new face for me this season. All right, it is now seven o'clock in the evening and I was already in relaxy mode at home. You know, take the contact lenses out, get into the scalding soak, get a good bath going on, clean the smell of venom off of me. Yeah, I've been smelling venom all day. It's definitely back in the season. And then I got a call. It's another snake out here at the University of Lethbridge. So this is snake call number five here this early in May. <laughs> Fairly unprecedented, but uh, I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it. I'm so glad the season has turned like this. So. Are you hunting ground squirrels? All right, so there's some people up the hill um, doing a cleanup of the coolie, just walking around with trash bags and picking up garbage and stuff, litter that's just blowing around. So I found a good hole to let this snake down into, just so that it'll be out of the way um, and these folks won't bump into him. I didn't want to displace him because I think uh, well, the, the closest end site that I know of is on the other side of this new building that's being constructed. So I think there's another hibernacula uh, just out here that I'm unaware of. And so I, I want to keep him out here. So this hole is going to be as good as any for right now. All right, buddy. You ready? It's a big guy. Male snake, I believe. Not too big, but you know, mature snake, rattlesnake for here. Yeah, it's your hole. It's your hole. <laughs> So this last snake turns out to be a familiar face. This is a snake who I call Kelsey. And I've encountered Kelsey several times over the past five years at the University of Lethbridge, and I'm particularly glad to see him today. And I'll tell you why, but first, let's look at the pattern break that I recognize him by. Down at the lower part of his body that's just coming into the frame now, you'll see four dots and a line and then another dot. There's that other dot just emerging now. So this is the real distinct pattern break that I look for to identify this snake. And I'll show you an older picture I have of him here. Um, this is a previous picture I took. And so you can see kind of up by his head uh, where, his, where his tail 
you just hug it against his neck you can see the four dots the line and then and the dot again so yeah same snake i've seen him several times and i'm glad to see him this on this occasion because since the destination project started i hadn't seen kelsey and normally i had encountered him in the parking lot the little loop parking lot that used to be down at the north end of the sixth floor of university hall that now is just completely buried under the <laughs> under the uh, destination project building so i kind of thought that maybe kelsey and some of his relatives were destroyed in the project just because they had a den there that i hadn't identified yet um, glad to see that didn't happen and it's also an indication that the den is still further north there in the area where I released him. So I'll be keeping an eye out for that in the future and hopefully encountering Kelsey again before long. <laughs>